Welcome to Reflections, a program where we discuss values and virtues for the transformation of the individual and the society in general. I am Father George Ehusani, and today I have in the studio with me Mr. Omar Bishé Barrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Omar Bishé Barrow is a banker, he is a, a pension expert, right? That's correct. And then he's a politician. That's correct. Um, Omar Bishé Barrow is one of those who uh, ran for the House of Representatives in the recent elections. Uh, he didn't quite win. Yes. Uh -huh. But um, you are a successful politician in the sense that you have tested the waters. Yes, and, uh -huh. and we say that uh, success is not a destination or a place. It's a journey and it's a it's process. It's a journey. The, and we the, had a good process and we had a good journey. So wonderful. They say, they say the voyage is as important as the destination. That's correct. Good. Yes. So um, I'm happy that you went through the voyage yes. and uh, you have had an experience yes. of running around the entire Amak and Buari uh, constituencies and uh, you can now speak and since you are a leadership coach yes you can use your practical experience exactly on the field yes. in, in 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 teaching and, teaching. and educating people congratulations about once again leadership. thank you very much yeah I, I mean i thought i would at this time be calling you honorable but uh, <laughs> congratulations uh, attempted honorable <laughs> and uh, we hope that this experience will be useful next time it certainly will great it certainly will. now Bishé, we have done the national elections. Yes. The president and senators and House of Rep members. What is your experience about our development of democracy, mm. our democratic evolution in this country? Mm -hmm. Have we made much progress mm -hmm. between 1960 and now, or mm -hmm. even between 1999 mm. uh, and now, mm. in our political behavior? Mm. in our democratic conduct, mm. has there been some maturities? Mm. Has there been some development? Mm. Or are we still at the starting blocks? Mm. After the elections, there's been all kinds of hue and cry about the process, about INEC and how effective or not effective INEC was, mm. Mm. about rigging, mm. um, all kinds of uh, mm. complaints here mm. and there mm. at the local levels and at the national levels. What would you say, mm. uh, honestly, is your experience of Nigerian democracy? democracy? Well, you know, democracy, like every system, you know, it is, if you think about it like um, an economic system, it's demand, supply, and regulation. So you have those who are supplying politics, who are the politicians. You have those who are meant to be demanding good politics and good governance, who, who are the electorate. And then you have the regulator, who is the umpire, in this case, INEC. So my general assessment is this, that there is not much level of maturity from pe perhaps even those who are demanding the most. When, when, when I look at my own experience and the experience of this election and the few elections I've seen in the last 20 years, I think that the demand side is where the problem is. The what, demand side, the, demand side the, people. Yeah, the people, that's where the problem is. The people who think about politicians as, for example, a politician is a bad person. So even if a good person comes, your first in, uh, instinct. instinct is that the person is bad. You, you, so you hear someone is a politician, the first instinct is, let's chop his money. You hear that someone is a politician, oh, I hope he's sharing money. And if the person doesn't do those things, then the person is not a good politician. So here's my take, that Nigerians allow, encourage, and even wish for bad politics, but they expect good governance. Nigerians allow yes. and wish for bad politics, exactly. but they expect Ex good, good governance. governance. And there is a disconnect. It's cause and effect. If you have bad politicians, then you will have bad governance. And democracy is not complete. Democracy doesn't end with just voting. It also ends with accountability. How can you have people accountable when those people used cheap inducements and money to get you to vote? You told me that... Uh, as you are going on your rallies, yes. that wherever you go, after speaking to them, they say, how much? Father, the night before the election, I received over a hundred text messages on our call center from people who claim that they are so poor and they are calling to say, Honorable, I would like to vote for you. You people have been following up, but you have to drop something. This is the night before the elections. That's where people, and, and people say, oh, it's okay that they are poor people. I say they are so poor, but they can send a text. How poor is poor? They are definitely poor in their mind and in their hearts. They are very weak people. But it's not about poverty in their pockets. Because it is not, how much is it? 
some people were giving 500 naira, two of you share. So is it 250 naira that is going to make the big difference in your life? People don't even know what their vote really means. Those who are taking ballot papers and just stamping on behalf of evil politicians, those who have collected 250, even 10,000 naira, do they really know what their vote means? I think that's where the problem. So for me, the biggest problem with our democracy still lies on the demand side of democracy. So we're talking about massive ignorance. Exactly. You see, in the Greek world where this whole democratic thinking started, mm. There was a level of awareness, mm. a level of civic awareness, where they started talking about the philosopher king, mm. where they will recognize somebody as a wise man, man a knowledgeable exactly, person, exactly. an enlightened person. Exactly. That's the kind of person we want to represent us. Mm -hmm. Where we are today, do the people have the minimum enlightenment, mm. awareness, civic awareness, social awareness, to be able to see the difference between um, cause and effect mm. and say, if we vote this kind of human being mm. in, mm. he may be a rich person who mm. can give us 5,000 naira each, mm. but what is he going to achieve for us? Mm. Mm. It, appears, it appears that we even have a situation where it's more of personality cult exactly. we are engaged in today mm. than, than, a, than a, a followership based on ideology and yes. values and what the person really wants to, is going to offer. You know, many people don't even know some of the candidates they have voted for in the elections. They just voted, either because it was a personality cult or just a, a frenzy to just elect one party. If they, you hear yeah. a lot of the young people who have the voters' cards, yes. because what it has turned out, if you look at the pattern of the national elections, yes. especially the presidential elections, yes. you will see that a lot of the Talakawas yes. that voted for the president, yes. I don't think they have any idea of, you know, the mani concrete manifesto, plans, agenda, plans, it has nothing agendas, to do with that. Has nothing to do. Yeah. It is about personality. Personality, yes. And then when they are discussing those personalities, and when you see what happened the day after the announcement exactly, were made, yes. young people were riding, doing dispatch riding and yes. dangerously, dangerously riding all over the town, celebrating. And, yes. I ask myself, what do these people hope to gain? Exactly. What are they celebrating about? Is it just the personality who won? Or is there something that they believe is going to happen to their lives? Clearly, it is just that personality. So, democracy stands on certain pillars. Mm. One of those powerful pillars is education. Exactly. A level of awareness. Mm. It's not about formal education in the university mm. or secondary school, but awareness. So, Father, let's take it to another direction. So, this awareness and this education, how about those of us who are so-called educated? We also display high levels of electoral and political naivety. The people you are talking about yeah. they didn't even have PVC. They didn't and have those PV who have and PVC. They slept off and yeah, they, they did not go and vote. vote. I mean, how could we have 72 million people who collected, collected their PVC and end up having 26 million, million people, people voting? Vote. Exactly. Three quarters did not vote. So that shows you. And so when you talk about what has happened is that in most societies, uh, people who vote in developed societies are the people who are actually very sophisticated because they know that they are going to pay taxes. And therefore, they have to hold their government responsible. Yes. So they are actively participating in voting. In Nigeria, it's the other way around. It is the, po it is the people at the fringes of society who go and vote. And those who are comfortable with the status quo, they, they understand how to milk the system and how to walk around the system. So to them, whether the system works or it doesn't work, they are okay. It is those people that we also need to start interrogating and challenging. The, Why do they sit at home? The so-called elite. The, the so-called elite. Now, in the last few days, we have been hearing people saying, look, the reality of this election, the national elections, is that there are no polling booths on social media. Yes. There are no polling booths yeah. on social media. Exactly. A lot of people have spent their time on social media. They have had polls on social media. Exactly. And the reality of the election, when the election was done, is that a lot of the celebrity social media people who mm. are on social media 10 hours of the day, yes. they remained on social media yeah. on the election day. Yes, exactly. While the foot soldiers yes. went out to vote. So, you now have a situation where the elite, mm. those who know what the issues are, ah, yes. um, they never voted. They never voted. 
those who do not know, so you let the uh, quote unquote the Nigerian expression, the Mekunus, yes, uh -huh, the Talakawas, yes, the uneducated, yes, the, they uh, decide the fate of everybody, they decide our fate. Ex so, what, what else do you expect them to do? So, when you look at certain calibers of people that have now got into the National Assembly who have retained their seats, and people are shouting, I'm saying, but the people who voted for them is the same type of people who have always voted. Where were you? Another issue, you know, I said demand supply. Let's look at the supply side. So all of us who are educated and enlightened, what do we throw ourselves into the supply of politics? Or we say politics is dirty. And that's still a big issue. I mean, some people, when I declared my intention to run for office, thought I was mad. That is, family members will call me and say, and call my parents and everybody around that, is there something wrong with your child? That why would somebody who is decent want to get involved in politics? Well, part of the reason why they... <sighs> Perhaps part of the reason why they say it, because those kind of people will now call you and say, you see what we said Yes, now. exactly. Meaning that uh, when, you look at, when you look at the presidential candidates mm. and you see the caliber of persons, Mogalu, yes. um, uh, Obadiah, yes. Melafia, uh, Malafia, yes. and all those kind of people, yes. uh, the presidential candidate yeah, of your party, talk Fashua, and, so, and, and so on and so forth. Yes. When you look at them, I mean, they are the kind of people that... Inter on an international level, the philosopher kings, the philosopher kings, yes. But some of them got 1,000 votes, yes. some of them got 5,000 yes. votes, where others were getting uh, PDP and APC were getting 15 million, yeah. 11 million yes. votes, yes. So Nigerians are often looking at who is succeeding, mm. who appears to be succeeding, mm. and they are saying, Okay, you didn't want to be part of. The establishment. Yes. So you joined a party that is new, yeah. that is promising a new yes. Nigeria. Yes. Uh, so how many votes did you get? Yeah, but you see, the, the, the funny thing about it, and I got this feedback from people at the end. They say, oh, Nigerians voted for what was popular. I said, no. Nigerians voted, a, a great number of people voted for, like you said, the cult followership. A greater proportion voted for the money. You see, Nigerians' money is our, is our God. Nigerians worship money. Mm. And and, and the, the uh, good Lord said you cannot worship God and Mammon. This so are you saying in, are you saying that actually a lot of money went around? Oh, certainly. I mean, for people to be calling me, sending me text message at twelve midnight. Here's what they were saying: that the other people are sharing money. So if you bring, so I say to people that it doesn't matter what party I belong to. Actually, Father, if I decide that I want to take tons of money the night before an election and share it, I will win the election regardless of my party. People don't care about the, people have gotten to that point where we really are in a mammonite, mammonite frenzy in our country. The other people are voting because they believe that there's something pecuniary they are going to get. Do you know how many people of my type asked me many times at different fora that ah uh, Baru that she if you win Sha you will remember us. There was only a group that I was added to of so-called voters in Abuja who asked me who her for chief of staff in my in my in my office for three other positions that I should sign an accord with them, that if I do. So people are looking for jobs. They are looking for pecuniary benefits. They are looking for money. They are looking so for contracts. We are, we are talking about instant gratification. Exactly. So there's a widespread That's orientation yes. for instant gratification yeah. rather than deferred gratification. Yes, and, and, and let me expand on that. One of the things I saw was that people would say, okay, you sound like a good person and so on, but you see, we are so distrusting of the political class that just give me something now. Just give it to me. That all these things you are saying is just English. I don't actually believe. And they, there is nothing that has ever happened in my life. And I tell some people who are of my own Christian orientation that when you actually say that you do not believe that there can be one good leader in Nigeria, it's you actually... Call for, you call for bad leaders. It, and for me, it's actually a mistrust of God. It means you are saying that God is dead. God is no longer on the throne. That you are saying that, how, that there is nobody that God created in Nigeria, that Nigeria is doomed that we can never have and, one person. And if you say that, that negative thinking produces This is negativity. the negative result. Yes. Exactly. It brings negativity. And, and what they are trying to do, Father, is to push you to do exactly what the oh, typical politician... It's the same, isn't the same thing in business, that they push you to do exact to, to pay bribes. They make it, you know, they want you to, to conform to the new norm. And, and tell you that it is not possible to do business yes, in Nigeria, Nigeria without, without giving bribes. So it's the same thing. That's the same. so that's where we are in terms of the quality of so our democracy. So would you say then that that even though Nigerians are touted to be among the happiest people, mm -hmm. but that Nigerians there is a dominate dominant negative thinking. Yes. Especially when it comes to rulership, leadership, politics. Yes. Yes. There is neg 
negative thinking yes, all over the place. Yes, yes. Like I said earlier, Nigerians accept, expect, and actually deify bad politics. And then turn around and hope for some reason that they will get good governance. And until we see, for me, the solution to Nigeria, I can tell you the day that Nigeria will change. It is the day that evil politicians will go around sharing these their monies, cheap gifts and inducements, and Nigerian people will turn them away and say, take your money and go away. You, you see, and, and, and actually beat and say that eh, that we exact violence on those who collect the money. That it is until we get to that day, we have not seen you know, the Nigerian I, renaissance. I, I, I was at a forum where somebody said, look, collect their money. Yes. Uh, uh, collect their money, but vote your conscience. It's no such thing. And I have constantly said, yes. no, no, no. There's nothing work. like that. You cannot use corrupt means yes. to destroy corruption. In fact, Father, when people say this, I tell them when Jesus said that you cannot... Uh, serve God and mammon. Yes. He was equating money to a God status. He yes. understands there's a spirituality behind it. Oh, yes. You cannot collect someone's money. That money becomes your conscience. Yes. It will worry you through the night until you go and press your hand and vote for that person. Yes. So there's no such thing as collect, collect the person's the money. money and, and vote. vote your conscience. Yes. The money is your conscience. You will yes. vote in accordance yes. to what that money uh, has asked what you to do. What people don't recognize is that, as you said, there is a spirit behind money. Exactly. People underrate the, the spirit, spirit behind of money. money. Yes, behind people money underrate the addictive nature of yes. money which is why people never have enough exactly money is like cocaine exactly the more you have the more you want the more you want and the more you need actually yes. To, yes. to keep yes. alive yes. Yes. yes so uh, if people decide that it is those who have money that yes. they will congregate around around uh, it will never be enough they will never have the have best people, people run their affairs mm. now what about for the future I believe you you are now a politician yes the future uh, my sadness when i was watching the results display of the results was mm. how all the remaining 70 how many or 90, 70 how many political uh, parties, parties 70 uh, presidential candidates mm. all their votes didn't amount to one million mm. so in the last six months nine months i have agonized over the mm. fact that how can a lot of these smart people want to upstage the PDP and the APC, and then they they think they can go it alone. Mm. They can they think they can win this election mm. alone because they are on social media mm. and they have a lot of fans on social media. Mm. Mm. How come all these new political parties? Mm. How can they? Why can they work together? Father, the truth about it, and you saw this, I agree 100%. We need to organize, and that's what I've always said. However, look at some of the actors in the build-up to this election, the presidential election. Look at people, and I don't want to mention names, but we all know ourselves. Look at people who went around creating a group and saying, let us identify one person. Then you finish identifying the person, then you go and declare for president. Then you go around from one party to the other looking for people to step down for you. You see, the problem is that the supply side too has a problem. People who are going into politics, unfortunately, these so-called new generation politicians, we have to check ourselves. We don't all share the same values. That's clear. We don't all have a positive view and ideology. A lot of us are selfish. So it is not very easy for you to tell us to just, even within the party, you would find people who are working at different uh, uh, purposes, counter purposes. So it is not very easy. The, the reason why some of these big parties, the establishment parties, it is easy for them to seemingly come together is because they have one goal. To, mm -hmm. keep, to keep plundering the society. To keep holding the society Exactly. Down. You see, that's where... It, and so once you start speaking about things that are so godly values and things that are uh, beyond... Common good. Common good. It's very hard to truly find people who are committed to the common good. So it is not very easy for us to just say, okay, let's all come together, form an alliance. And an alliance based on what? Father, you saw, for example, on, on international media, the gentleman who was talking about Mr. Trump, for example, where he said that he only ran into the election just to create a brand for himself. That Trump had no intention. This is uh, the gentleman who is uh, Michael, uh, I've forgotten his surname. Cohen. Cohen. And, and I'm asking myself, but many of our presidential candidates did it for the exact same reason. If just you ask them, just to create a brand for themselves. They knew they would win. Did they intend to win? That's the other question. What was their real intention? Some of them, how about those who decided in close to the end that, oh, they were going to give up their mandate and go and support another party? 
or one of the stronger or the bigger parties. What does that tell you? So I tell people that it's not so it's easy for you on the outside to say, let's all get together and form one uh, uh, one joint uh, uh, mandate. Yeah, but, 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 but what does that mean? What that means is that a lot of us who complain about the status quo. Yes. We have not done our homework with regards to what is the philosophical um, orientation behind exactly. our wanting to be engaged. Exactly. So we have not done our homework because, you see, if we find out, if we sit down and ask ourselves, what is a nation? Mm. What makes a nation? Mm. What are the values that make a nation? Mm. What are the ingredients that you know, make a collocation of people come together to, find, mm. to found um, a nation? nation yes. If we agree on what those values are, mm. then it shouldn't be difficult for uh, 20, 30, 40 political parties to come together to form one. Yes. If we agree on core values for yes. nation building, building. Mm. and we sit down and ask ourselves, what should we consider to be the core set of Nigerian values? Mm. Let's say sanctity of life. Exactly. The sacredness of every, every human, human life. life. Mm. If we all agree on that, then all of us will be terribly distressed mm. to hear that on account of an election, a human being was mm. wounded, mm. not to talk of a human Man being was killed. Yeah, exactly. Now, those core values, service of the common good, mm. making sure that the, the a life of the villager yes. is as valued as, as the, the life of, of the, the person the in Naso Villa. Exactly. If those are the kind of values that hold us together, then it shouldn't have been difficult to, for 40, 50 political parties. So, that's, to and come so that's my point. So the values of those people and those political parties, can we all say that these values are shared? Or the only thing we really share is a desire for some political aggrandizement and to also say that, uh, and you know, it's as some, for some people it's as basic as I'm a former honorable, I'm a former presidential candidate. That is what people... So I, I, I'll be very honest. But what do they gain from being ah, You'll be surprised. They believe that it opens doors for them. It gives them access to places where they hitherto will never have been able to enter. So sometimes, Father, the point is, we are talking at a very high level. Many people are not at this level. But there is work. So you started off by asking, there's work to be done, certainly. The work to be done is to find these people that really understand these issues, the common good and the redistribution of wealth and so on and so forth. Find them and let's work together. But there is work to be done. To be honest, my real experience is that five, six months campaigning is very different from three years building the hearts mm -hmm. and minds of people. I have constantly, and that's what we need to do. I have constantly told people, that, okay, a young person like you, mm. I think we should be looking at eight years. Mm. You mentioned three years now. Yes. I think we should be looking at eight years. Mm. It is just in the last one year that we found a lot of people come out to say they are presidential exactly. candidates. Exactly. They are political parties. Parties, yes. But if we can start movements, not exactly. even political parties mm. yet, but m social movements mm. today, mm. rallying around somebody mm. and saying, this person has the qualities that we believe can exactly. see us to exactly. our promised land. Exactly. So you found a movement yes. and keep recruiting people exactly. of like mind. Exactly. Keep that recruiting is it. people that of, is of it. like mind. But it does, you can test it in four years. Yes, you it's, can test it. Yeah, you can years. test it in four yes. years. And that's my point. That you know, even what we've done, we've tested it now. We'll test it again. But you have you are correct. It's a long-term project that has to be systematically and deliberately intentionally executed and, and conceived, conceived and executed. It's not something that is going to happen by mistake. I, I don't think that we as a country, we are condemned to this low level quality of politics. We are definitely I, not. God I, is I, I on the throne. I, yeah, we, I don't think we are condemned <laughs> yeah, to this level. I, 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 think, I think we can aim at a true democracy, yeah. the, the government of the people, for the people, for the people by, by the, the people. people. We yeah. can aim at it. Yes. And then we can aim at people who have real passion for the common good emerging yes. uh, to, to, to run the affairs of this country. Mm. Uh, we have the human population. Mm. We have the resources, mm. the material resources. We have the intelligence. What it takes is leadership, and that is what is missing. Exactly. So, but then that leadership, it will not emerge if, as you are saying, if the, supply, the demand side yes. continues to demand for, for... For cheap inducements. Yes. And if the supply side is made up of people who, who's only... Offer is the cheap inducement. Is the cheap in, in, inducement. Yeah. I, I look forward to Ni a, a Nigeria where money bags mm. will be pushed aside. 
Correct. And that Nigerians will go out and look for people of hey, quality, uh, who are sensitive, yes. who are compassionate, yes. who have a concern for the common good. They look for them and um, sponsor, sponsor them. them yes. Sponsor. Yes. Sponsor them. Contribute their five thousand, their ten thousand, what you call crowdfunding, crowdfunding yes. to fund them yes. rather than demand that they give them money. Exactly. I look forward to that happening. Yeah. Uh, it may not happen in four years. It may mm. not even happen in eight, eight years, years. But yes. that's the kind of politics that will take us out. And of Father, this. until we have that type of politics, I dare say, our circumstances will not, will change. not change. That's what Nigerians need to realize that the way we are doing it over and over again. It will never create the Nigerian yeah, But they say it now that if you have been doing the, the same, same thing, thing in the same over, way yes. and expect a different result, well, it's madness. Then, then it's madness. Yes. Uh, on that note, we'll bring this segment to an end. We, I have been speaking to Mr. Omar Bishé Barrow. Uh, he's uh, an investment banker. He's a leadership coach. And then he's going to bring his experiences uh, in the last uh, few months uh, into his leadership uh, uh, work. And we hope that this madness yes. of expecting um, bad to, politics. Uh, expecting bad politics to produce good, good leaders, leaders yeah. that that madness will be healed of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.